I'm a humanitarian. I've spent my life. You're in this a work. humanitarian we who can't have... find 85,000 children and don't give a ripping flip about where they are or what is going on in their precious lives. All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here. And we got Senator Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee in the building today. And what you're about to see is her completely roast and toast a very heartless upper level Biden official that has somehow lost track of at least 85,000 children due to poor immigration policy. So all of this is ridiculous. I'll give my full thoughts on the back end. Let's get it popping. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for being here. This is really pretty remarkable testimony coming from you all, listening to what you've had to say. Basically, we've got a broken system. You don't know how to fix it. Money's not going to solve this problem, Ms. Nanda. Uh, you don't know the numbers. You don't know the law to enforce the law. So what comes across is that we've got a homeland security team here that doesn't believe in securing the homeland <clears throat> because you don't care enough to go deep enough into the issue to be able to define the problem and be able to fix it. Now, Ms. Marcos, I'm going to come to you because I've written Secretary Becerra twice about these children that they just can't find. Now, First letter, he got uh, Acting Assistant Secretary Jeff Hill to send a non-response to my office, and then I sent another letter, and I haven't heard anything from him. I have asked that he come to the committee and talk to us about what has happened with these 85,000 children where they are, and why efforts are not being made to find them and to be certain that they are being cared for. But there's no response to that because there again, you all believe in open borders. Your goal is not to secure the country and the border. Your goal is to just let everybody come on in and to hell with this trying to find 85,000 kids. You didn't vet the sponsors right. You did not do an FBI background check. Imagine that. You loosen what is required of people, and then you want to come here and say, we need more money so we can do our job. All right, um, Ms. Director Marcos, Linda Brandmiller, do you know that name? And keep your mic on. I'm aware of that name. You're aware of that name. And Jalen Solong, you know that name? Yes. Okay. And you know that both of these women were whistleblowers. And both of these women were fired for being a whistleblower. Are you aware of that? Senator, um, I... Quickly, my time's running out. Fast. Go. I'm not aware of the specifics. You're not aware staff. of the specifics. Do you know who approved their this retaliation against the whistleblowers? You do not know. Senator, I cannot speak to the specifics. You can't of... speak to the specifics. Okay, was the secretary notified about the urgent situation developing in the department and that these children were being released to potentially exploitative sponsors. Did anybody pay attention to that? Or did you care? Was it nine to five, draw a paycheck, go on? We don't care. We're not concerned about an open border. We're not concerned about protecting children. What is your job? You're the Office of Refugee Resettlement. And you're not going to follow up on where these children are and who has custody of these children? Why did you accept the responsibility to be in charge if you're not going to do your job and protect these children? You don't have an answer to that. You don't know why you accepted the responsibility. Senator, I would be happy this is why to we need the secretary this, but you're to come. Not giving me an opportunity. Oh no, I gave you the tell me. Why did you okay. take the job? I took the job because 
I'm a humanitarian. I've spent my life. You're in this a work. humanitarian we who can't have... find 85,000 children and don't give a ripping flip about where they are or what is going on in their precious lives. Is that what you're that telling me? Is a mischaracterization of everything that we do. I have tried to explain, but I am not given the opportunity. Take the time, 25 seconds. Thank you. you. I appreciate that. When a child is released from our care, there are a number of ways that they can continue to receive services. We attempt the safety and well-being call for every child who's been released. There is no obligation for a child or a sponsor to answer the call, and there's reasons why they may not want to answer a call from the government. Oh, for heaven's sakes, they're being paid to take these children, and there's no reason for them to answer the phone? They're not being paid to take these children children. Sorry. Uh, may yeah, I finish, are. please? Yeah, they are. Go ahead. They also, um, post-release services, over 50% of our children, we, we are working hard to get post-release services for all children. Um, we are over 50% right now. That is another way to have a trusted adult in these, child, uh, in these children's lives. Legal services is another um, way, and we are expanding. We are providing more legal okay. services. Okay, my than time we ever. has expired, and you, okay. uh, your you. answers are incomplete. Um, I'm just wondering: is there anyone in this administration that could do their job correctly? I mean, the simple task: just show up, execute on a few simple things, add some sort of value to society, uphold and, and serve how you took an oath to do. But no, based on everything I've seen, the answer is a massive. Absolutely not. When it comes to these Biden officials, these put people put in positions from this top down, it don't make no sense. It absolutely does not add up. But thank God there's still a few. Thank God for senators like Marsha Blackburn. I pray she stays safe because she hit the nail right on the head that this wicked woman, she only sees it as a nine to five. She's only there to collect that probably absurd paycheck for doing absolutely nothing and nothing more. She don't care about these kids. She's not a humanitarian like she falsely labeled herself as. She, she doesn't care two licks about these children. If the people and children are already unvetted, already lost in the system, then how do you know who and where to reach out to to make sure that people are responsibly being taken care of and set up to succeed in this country? You don't. It don't make no sense, as is the case with most of these government decisions. And none of this would even be a problem if the border was completely locked down how it's supposed to be in the first place. I don't get what's so complicated about this. It's against the law to come into this country without going through the vetting process to become a legal United States citizen. I mean, they say that 85,000 kids are missing, but is that really true? It, it could easily be hundreds of thousands, but who knows since these people never do their jobs and now innocent children are having to pay the price and that ain't right. And I get that they're illegals. I get that they get the name classification as aliens, but if they're under 18, which many of them are way younger than that, those are innocent lives that shouldn't have to suffer for their parents or family members poor decisions that wound them up at the border they didn't decide to to go and try to come into another country because of cartel violence and drugs and whatever the the case may be of of danger down in mexico and i know a lot of people at the, the border aren't uh, asylum seekers they're not migrants and, and they're not refugees looking for safety they're trying to bring that crime into our streets and take advantage of our tax dollars and all the luxuries and, and freedoms that have been fought and died for in our country that many have worked for and sacrificed i know that the liberals don't understand that, but this country is established the way it is for a reason. But at the same time, as a Christ follower, I'm a firm believer in the golden rule. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, you should also do to them. So if someone adopts a kid or vows to be their guardian, like this evil woman has done, uh, then it's their responsibility to follow through. Even if that kid isn't technically supposed to be on this side of the wall, they already failed on stopping that from happening in the first place. They're already here, so don't drop the ball even more by not helping that child become a citizen and, and have the tools to succeed in this country. We're already throwing out billions and billions of dollars to take care of people that are across the ocean, making sure that they're living that good life. So we got people right here at our door that we can save these kids' lives. Again, I'm not saying bring all of them in because 
the law is that the border should be locked down. But kids, innocent children and mothers that are truly in need, we should be saving their lives. I'm not saying we can house and provide for all of them, but we can do our best to help at least some. If you're a human being, especially if you're a proclaiming Christian and Christ follower, you should be loving your neighbor as yourself. And sometimes I come off as a little too harsh, but when it comes to these kids, I got a soft spot. And at the very least, these humanitarians and, and government officials should regularly be in direct contact contact with every single one of these kids and these families if they are inside of our country. That's a fact. If they're already here, you already know they're here, then do your job and make sure they're doing good things. But instead of taking care of business, we got people like this evil looking dark eyed woman that are trained liars. Uh, um, I can't answer that. I don't know. I'm just sitting up here getting paid for doing nothing. I don't know anything at all. Bull crap. And then you got the nerve to sit up here acting even greedier, asking for more funding, more of our tax dollars to do even even less of your job than you already are like these people are, are on some next level kinds of nuts and we need to get rid of these time sessions altogether there's no reason that speakers like marshall blackburn and many others should have a countdown on their interrogation process or dropping facts in their statements or whatever it may be the people being questioned they need to sit there until they can provide a legitimate answer if you do the crime you do the time and if you didn't do the crime then at least make it make sense and explain to us what's actually going on behind the scenes but these people People, they get a free pass, it seems like. And what I see are a bunch of serial deceivers that would pander to Satan himself if it meant that they could keep their position of power. And it blows my mind how little this agency that vows to protect and, and care for children, how little they seem to actually care about protecting and helping children. This lady's name is Robin Marcos, and somehow she's managed to become the director of the Office of Refugee Resettlement at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Say that. 10 times fast but to me it looks like her and a whole bunch of other folks they are that they're supposed to be responsible for these kids they instead need to be fired and we need to defund them we need to put them in jail for incompetence because they are blatantly breaking the law and they won't give accountability for our tax dollars and they, they have the nerve to keep asking for more and it's getting funneled in there for them to do nothing these people they need to be held accountable for the safety of these children that they let in the same way parents are held accountable for their own children and I know I'm fired up about all this and you should be as well because from everything I see this ain't cutting it. This is not getting it done. This is a bunch of evil, stupidity, and chaos that we see unfolding right before our eyes. And I don't have all the answers, but Lord, I pray that it's not these people that are serving in their current seasons of power. Lord, I pray that Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, comes back real soon. And if you haven't reached repentance and put your faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior, I don't know what you're waiting for because you never know when, when it's all going to be over. It's all going to end at some point. And if you aren't on the right side of heaven, it's going to be real hot and painful forever. But what do y'all think about all this? Did you agree with Marshall Blackburn going off? Do you agree with my perspective afterwards? Do you think I'm way off? Let me know why and what you think down below in the comments section. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Don't forget to hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring that notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a new video. If you like what I'm doing over here and you want to show a little extra love and support, make sure you check out our website down below in the description section. That way you can get awesome shirts like you see me wearing in every single video made by my beautiful wife. This design is the Isaiah 49 verse 25 one. We've got all different options, sizes, colors, variations that you or someone you know will love petite t extra small sizes to big big and hefty make sure you go check those out outside of that you can always donate to the channel by joining the gibson family here on youtube or on patreon or buy me a coffee all those links are down below as always by no means do you have to do any of that just showing up and listening to my freckle face ran at you for a few minutes i'm greatly appreciative i love y'all i'll be praying for you until next time godspeed i'm gone